So you're wondering which stranded copper wire splice is going to give you the lowest resistance connection or how one splicing method compares to another. In this video you're going to find out. To demonstrate I'll be using number 18 copper wire. I'll be testing eight different splicing methods. Each one of the testing wires was cut to the exact same length and the same 6.4 amp load will be used to perform each test. You're going to see voltage drop measurements across each one of the splices and I'll also look at the splice after five minutes using my thermal imaging camera to check for heating. The first wire we're going to test is one without a splice. As you know, wire has resistance and of course as current flows through a wire you can have a voltage drop. So right over here you see there's two areas that the insulation was removed. Purpose of that is for me to get measurements using my digital multimeter. When the load is connected, current's going to be flowing, and if we measure between here and there, we'll have a reading in millivolts to let us know how much the voltage is going to drop using roughly a 6.4 amp load. We'll have that value and be able to compare it to the different splices. The second wire is this one right here. As you can see, it's nothing more than just two conductors twisted together, just like you were going to cover them with electric tape. All connections in this video were cleaned prior to connecting them. Next up is the splice I showed you in a previous video when you place the two copper conductors side by side and you wrap them together very tightly using bus wire. The next splice is one many of us have used many times over the years and that's this one right over here, a butt splice crimp connector. We're going to see how much the voltage drops across one of these connectors. Another common method is using a tap splice connector, one like you see right here. We're going to be checking this out. This wire here has two conductors that were stripped, cleaned, twisted together, and soldered using 6040 rosin core solder. Here's another soldered connection we're going to be testing. Each one of the conductors was tinned, placed side by side, and connected. No twisting of the conductors. That's 6040. Another soldered connection, just like the previous one. The only difference is this uses 2% silver solder. And the last method we're going to be testing are the two conductors joined together using silver epoxy. This is the highest conductivity silver epoxy that you can buy. All I did was take each one of the conductors, clean them, dip each one into the epoxy, place the two conductors side by side, and then just smoothed out the epoxy over the two wires and allowed it to set for 24 hours. Okay, we're all set up. I have the power supply unit over here on the left. It's going to be a little difficult to see this readout, so I'm going to have another camera off to the side directed right at the screen. Over here is my digital multimeter set to the millivolt range. You're going to see the voltage drop right over here. The first test we're going to be checking the uncut wire, no splices. You can see each clip is connected in those areas that I opened up that are one and a half inches apart or just under 3.8 centimeters. Here's the probes leading to the meter. Right behind the ceramic bowl is the lamp. Generates a lot of heat and I also don't want to have it screw up the camera with the bright light so that's why I have the ceramic bowl placed in front. To perform each test, I'm simply going to disconnect the blade connector, disconnect the wire to the back of the power supply unit, and install the next one. Once the power supply is turned on, I'm going to wait five full minutes, and then we're going to take the thermal imaging camera and measure the temperature of this spliced area, or in this case, just the straight section of copper wire. Right over here, you can see we have a voltage drop of 5.5 millivolt. The voltage we're using is 14.02. We're drawing 6.33 amps and very close to 90 watts. Let's wait five minutes. Okay, guys, it's been five minutes. We're holding steady right around that 5.51 millivolt range. And over here's a look at the temperature of that wire. Now on to the next one. The next wire is the one that has just the conductors twisted together very tightly. Here we go. As you can see, it's around 13.4 millivolts. Looks like it's dropping off a little bit as time passes. We're going to wait five minutes and come right back. 
We're back, it seems to have leveled off right around 13.1 millivolts, so it's about two and a quarter times more than the wire itself if it was not cut. And right here is a look at the splice using the thermal imaging camera. The next wire we're going to test is the one that has the bus wire wrapped very tightly around the two conductors. It's the method I showed you in a previous video. Turn this on. Okay, so it's lower than just twisting the two copper wires together. And it's going to drop down a little lower. So let's wait around five minutes, come back, and take a temperature reading. All right, five minutes has passed. We're around 11.1 .1 millivolt, and that's not too bad because the wire itself exhibited a drop of 5.51 millivolts. So this is just double that number. Now a quick look using the thermal imager. The next wire has the butt splice crimp connector in position. For this one, it's 8.27 millivolts, so that's right in the center between the value that I got for the wire that was not cut and the wire that I wrapped with the bus wire. Five minutes passed and stable at 8.26 millivolts, and here's a reading with a the thermal imaging camera. And you can see the tube inside that connector is a little bit hotter than the other connections. The next wire has the tap splice connector. There's a line down the center. So what I did is I measured around three quarters of an inch that way and that way, or around 20, 21 millimeters. And that's how I got to about an inch and a half from the spliced area. So we're measuring here and there. Thirteen point five eight to start. Let's let it settle out for a bit. That's a little higher than twisting the wires together only if you were going to put electrical tape over it. And the readings over here, they're all very similar to the other tests. Five minutes has passed and we leveled off right around 13 millivolts. Right here is a look using the thermal imaging camera. Now we're going to be testing a wire that has the copper conductors twisted together and soldered using 6040 solder. Wow, and that is actually a hair lower than the wire that was uncut. And the reason why it might be a little lower is because these points where I connected to the wire could just be a hair closer inward towards the splice. So this is essentially as good as an uncut wire at this location. Let me wait five minutes, come right back. Five minutes later, 5.35 millivolt drop. And I think the reason why this is a little lower than the uncut wire, like I said earlier, either my contact points for the measurement are just slightly closer together than the other wire that I tested, or it's the fact that we have two layers of copper twisted together as one and then the solder flowed over it is making this area actually lower resistance than a section of copper where just the one conductor passes through. Right here you can see a look at the temperature. The next splice is two copper wires that were cleaned, tinned, and then heated when they were touched together. This is using 6040 solder. Just slightly lower than the uncut wire itself. Five minutes later, pretty much the same as having the two wires twisted together. Let's take a look at the temperature. 4 the next splice, the conductors were cleaned, tinned using 2% silver solder, and then touched together. Okay, so far very, very similar to the wire being uncut. So let's see. We're going to wait five minutes. Five minutes later, 5.46, and here's a look at the temperature. 
The last wire we're going to be testing uses the silver epoxy. Wow, and that's actually pretty impressive. That kind of a voltage drop using epoxy. Let's wait five minutes to see how it holds up. Five minutes has passed and the silver epoxy has performed extremely well. 9.56 millivolts. Now let's take a quick look at the temperature. Right here's a look at the results and as you can see the soldered connections performed extremely well. After the soldered connection the next best was the butt splice crimp connector. Then the silver epoxy connection followed by my bus wire wrapping method, the tap splice connector, and then last is the twisting of the two wires together. And guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. You should now know which splice is going to give you the lowest resistance connection. Thanks for watching.